I need to run. I need to be strong. I need to be fast. I need to keep going. I need to remember not to set my Budweiser on the back of some truck. I need a doctor. I need to run. I need to run. I need I need my Budweiser. I need, All right, so. I need a doctor. I need, I need. He's going in a straight line at constant speed. That's inertia. He's maintaining his initial motion. But as soon as there's a force acting on him, you notice that he changes direction. He slows down, which means that his velocity changes. What that means is he actually accelerates. So that's what a net force does, external force does. So when there's an external force acting on him, I need a doctor. You speed up, slow down, or change direction in the direction of the external force. That's known as the second law. The first law deals with what, what, what happens in the absence of an external force. The second law deals with what happens when they're in the presence of an external force. What happens in the presence of an external force is you do accelerate. External force does acceleration. External force is gonna overcome your inertia. It's gonna make you go faster, slower, or it's gonna make you change direction in the direction of the external force. So it, it, force acting on a system is gonna cause it to accelerate force acting on this mass is going to cause it to accelerate. Junior air force is going to be Newton's. So that becomes the second law. All right, so the second law is the force law. Force acting on the mass is going to cause it to accelerate. All right, so force causes acceleration. F is your force, M is your mass, and A is the acceleration. Acceleration is going to be expressed in terms of meters per second squared, as usual. Mass is going to be in terms of kilograms. The force is in honor of Newton. It's going to be Newtons. So the force is going to be expressed in terms of Newton. So second law is the force law. Proper unit is Newtons. In the United States, we use pounds. So roughly 10 Newtons of force is going to be 2.2 pounds. Not to be confused with mass. One kilogram of mass was 2.2 pounds as well, except this was a force unit. All right, so pick out the best answer and place it in the chat. All right, so C is the best answer. <clears throat> C is the best answer. Boop, boop, boop. All right, let's do a quick review. What's inertia? Inertia is the tendency to retain initial motion in the absence of an external force. What's Newton's first law? The first law is the same as inertia. How's mass defined in physics? Mass is the measure of inertia. What's the proper unit for mass? It's going to be kilograms. What do we use in the United States? We use pounds in the United States for mass. What's the Newton's second law? The second law is what happens in the presence of a force. Second law is the force law. What happens when there's an external force acting on an object? The object is going to speed up, slow, slow down, or change direction in the direction of the external force. So force causes acceleration. It overcomes the object's inertia. It overcomes the object's tendency to retain its initial motion. It overcomes the object's resistance to change in motion. Motion means velocity in this case. So the second law is the force law. Question number seven, what's the proper unit for force? 
proper unit for force is Newton or Newtons. What do we use in the United States? We use pounds in the United States. Question number nine, 10 and 11. If something is speeding up, is there no force acting on it? Of course. How do we know that? Because it's accelerating. Guys, if something is accelerating, it's accelerating because of a net force acting on it. If there's net force, something is going to accelerate. If a car is speeding up because it's accelerating, of course, there's a net force acting on it. Or else it would not be, it would not be accelerating. It would not be speeding up. Question number 10, if a car is slowing down, if a car is slowing down, is there a net force acting on it? Of course, because it's accelerating. Question number 11, if a car is moving at a curve at a constant speed, is there a net force acting on it? It's moving at a constant speed, but it's moving on a curve, which means that it's changing direction, which means that it's accelerating. If it's accelerating, of course, there's an air force acting on it because that's what an air force does. External force causes the objects to accelerate. All right, so the best answer is going to be C, so you guys got that right. Give yourself, give yourself five points for that one. All right, so the martial artists or the Kung Fu masters, evidently, according to a lot of the Eastern movies, they can do some, they can defy the laws of physics, evidently. So this guy is going to try to define Newton's second law. He's done his breathing exercises. What he's going to try to do is he's going to try to catch this falling tree trunk without accelerating. If he can do that without accelerating, then I'll say, okay, perfect. So this guy can find the laws of physics. Now, according to physics, let me tell you what the law says. This guy should accelerate in the direction of the external force. So there's going to be an external force acting on him, and he should accelerate in the direction of the external force. Guys, I'm making two statements. One statement is there's going to be a force acting on this person. The second statement is the, this force is going to have a direction. And the direction of this force is going to set the direction for that acceleration. So defining the laws of physics means I'm telling you what the law is. And if this guy does not move in the direction of the external force, then that's how you define the law. So physics is obvious. There's a prediction. The prediction is there's going to be a force acting on him. He will move in the direction of the force. He doesn't have a choice. And according to movie physics, oh, he's just going to do fine because he's done his exercises. He was breathing just fine. All right. He built up his chi. That's what they say. <laughs> Boom. Oh, well, evidently today is not a day to define the laws of physics. This being 2020, it didn't work out too long. I love this guy's excitement. He lined up properly. Catch the tree trunk. Uh, and then it looks. He almost tried. Uh, damn, so close. I love the crowd's reaction. A couple of people end up clapping their hands in appreciation. Most of them said, ah, let's move on. All right, guys, these are no special effects. No one got hurt. Supposedly, this is a commercial. That's what one of my Chinese students said. I don't know what for, though. Obviously, it's not a cold commercial. I wonder if it's related to constipation or something like, hey, we can squeeze this shit out of you naturally. All right, so whenever you come up with an answer, once again, keep putting stuff on the chat. I think there's a massive confusion here. So far, here's what I got. One person said D, one person said B. And then one person said C. This is awesome. Uh, we got a B again. So B's are leading. We got two B's. Okay, I'm getting uh, Jack pick B twice. Sophia picks B. Okay. All right. But there was bit of a confusion here. The confusion arises here, not because of your lack of understanding of physics or the concept. Your understanding is there. Your interpretation is lacking for those of you guys who didn't get to the right answer. Okay, so imagine that you apply the same amount of force on two different masses. All right, so one mass is massive, the other one is not. All right, just, I got this ball, so I'm gonna apply the same force on this ball and on my car. All right, so which one is gonna accelerate more? That's what it says. Which one is gonna speed up much more quickly? Translated to English, that's what it, it means. So what am I doing? I'm applying the same force on this ball as well as on my car. So which one is going to speed up faster? Which one is going to accelerate quicker? Which one is going to have a larger acceleration? And you know immediately that this ball is going to accelerate much more rapidly because it's less massive. 
All right, so which means that the acceleration of the light body is going to be larger. Those of you guys who pick B, give yourself five points. That's it. Okay, one of the things that I want you to notice about the fourth is, okay, all of a sudden you realize that your car is driving itself at night, and you know that's impossible, so all of a sudden you realize that it's being towed, right? And you could clearly see that it's being towed because uh, you can see that the tow truck is attached to it or your car is attached to the tow truck, more like it. All right, so those kind of push, pull, your car being towed, someone pushing on a buck, I mean, you can see the source of the force. There's a clear relationship between force and the motion. But when it comes to gravity, that relationship is not that obvious. Gravity is not something that you could see. So how do we know that gravity is a force? How do we know that the gravity is going in the downward direction? Oh, Newman. Wow, what a story. Unfortunately, the immutable laws of physics contradict the whole premise of your account. Allow me to reconstruct this, if I may, from the premise, as I've heard this story a number of times. Newman, Kramer, if you'll indulge me. According to your story, Fernandez passes you and starts walking up the ramp. Mm -hmm. Then you say you were struck on the right temple. The spit then proceeds to ricochet off the temple, striking Newman between the third and the fourth rib. The spit then came off the rib, made a right turn, hitting Newman in the right rib, causing him to drop his baseball cap. The spit then splash off the wrist, pauses in midair, mind you, makes a left turn and lands on Newman's left thumb. That is one magic loogie. Well, that's the way it happened. What happened to your head when you got hit? Well, uh, uh, my head went back to the left. Say that again. Back and to the left. Back and to the left. Back and to the left. What are you saying? I'm saying that the spit could not have come from behind. That there had to have been a second spitter. Behind the bushes on the gravelly road. The spitter was behind you as you claim. That would have caused your head to pitch forward. So the spit could have only come from the front and to the right. But that's not what they would have you believe. <laughs> I'm leaving. Jerry's a nut. <laughs> the sad thing is, we may never know the real truth. Okay, I noticed that they were trying to figure out the direction that the spit was coming from by looking at the motion of the head, the first jerk, the acceleration of it. In essence, what they're doing is they're making fun of the movie JFK. And the movie JFK, those of you guys who have seen it, give yourselves five points, is based upon, obviously, the Kennedy assassination investigation. So the movie alleges that there was a cover-up. All right, so um, most of you guys seen this footage, obviously. All right, so hint, hint, somebody, just a warning, somebody's going to get killed. Uh, you're not going to see much. It's not going to be gross. You're not going to see the details, obviously. It's a reconstruction of this footage. All right, so here's the premise of the movie. It's really, really well done. I love the reconstruction of it. All right, so there's a claim that there's a second shooter. And the premise of the movie was there's a cover-up because according to the history, there's only one single shooter. All right, so what do you expect, guys? The objects will have to accelerate in the direction of the external force. So Kennedy takes the first shot. All right, so you notice that his arm just went up. And so his body moves in the direction of the, the external force in this case. So the force generated by the bullet. And then all of a sudden, everything is going to go behind this little uh, cover, which means that the camera does, I think they're putting in a couple of footage together. And then the second shot, you just saw the second shot. All right, so his head jerks in this direction. All right, so given the fact that the objects will accelerate in the direction of the external force, clearly the movie will claim that there's a second shooter, which is going to agree with physics in essence. All right, so I think this is, we're going to go through the same thing again. All right, so I'm gonna move forward. I'm gonna move forward. Okay, let's check to see if we can get a better. All right, so I'm gonna stop it right here. All right, so he takes the first shot. He's in pain, he's grimacing. And then his head is gonna jerk in that direction. There's, you will see a flash of light as soon as we come out of it. All right, so he's in a lot of pain and notice that boom, it just lit up, the section lit up and notice that his body moves in that direction. All right, so what does it mean? I mean, you just saw the explosion right there, so the body's gonna move in that direction. So objects move or accelerate in the direction of the external force. So the implication is, the prediction is what physics predicts, which means that there had to be a second shooter. So the question is, was there a second shooter?